when, how. Uh, I've got lots of questions for him. Also, Deshaun Jackson on the program. Are we going to get into Xavier Leggett? Absolutely. We're going to get into all of that. Maybe have the two of them talk to each other. Who knows? But we got to dig into the Bills, who I had quite a time roasting on Twitter yesterday. In studio from South Carolina to an NFL team near you, where does he go? What an interesting world of draft prospects. Caleb, likely, hopefully, was in Chicago, stands alone at the top, and then and then what happens? Every little thing matters with they, their tape, their questions being picked apart. I just met Spencer Rattler. Lovely, delightful. I've met a lot, you know, I remember meeting Patrick Mahomes on the set of Good Morning Football. And, and, and uh, I remember meeting all these guys before, the, before they get drafted, the Josh Allens of the world and the excitement, the anticipation. Uh, and, and you never forget those first vibes you get from them. And some of them are good and some of them are not as great. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 with Spencer Rattler back there. Cannot wait to see where he goes. Um, there is a self-assuredness that you want to see out of a quarterback. There's confidence. Could not be kinder to my maniac staff that is making him do crazy stuff for social media back there. Amazing team. Showed up early. Like, love, loving, loving this time with Spencer Rattler. Excited to have him here. And I know I said I roasted uh, I roasted myself some Buffalo fans yesterday. Nobody wants it for Buffalo more than I do. I'd love it. Like, to get there, to, to vindicate yourselves, to make it to the biggest game, to not muck it up in the big moments as we've seen over and over and over again. But how do you walk this back? How do you see this, I guess, in, until they prove otherwise, that this move to deal Stephon Diggs, to part ways with all these players, to have that much on the salary cap still paid, how do you make good of it? Let's try, because the dust is sort of settling. The news broke during the show yesterday. And if you dig a little bit deeper at what's next, um, I guess what's important to me, because I because – I see these players, what they do on the field, the impact they have in their community, all of that. But also, I don't like when people are so adamant, whether it's Twitter people or team people or player people, you're so adamant about something before it happens, like saying there's no way, it's, virtual, it's impossible, he's not going to get traded. Obviously, that's not true. Or Josh Allen's better without him. Like you, To say things without knowledge, especially when it comes to empirical knowledge, bothers me. So I don't want to lose sight of what Stefan did for Josh Allen and the entire Bills organization. You can't live in a cloud of denial when you talk about what he meant to this team. So good riddance and have Texans deal with him, whatever. Like, you're fooling yourselves, and it's true. And I'm not saying that this means Josh Allen's going to fall off a cliff and that Stephon Diggs made Josh Allen. But the truth is, we don't know what Josh Allen is without Stephon Diggs. Well, we do, and the numbers aren't that great. Amazing opportunity for Josh to stare this in the face and, and do great. And whether it's with Khalil, whether it's with somebody else that they add in, the, in their first round with the 28th pick, uh, you need, as a quarterback and deserve a true go-to guy at receiver. No quarterback period is going to be consistently successful without that, right? But what Diggs did to help Josh achieve what he did and has is really special, and I'm not for clowning on Diggs at all. Show the man some respect. You can see right here some of the things Josh struggled with early on. Was it because of the coordinator at the time? Was it because he was still new to the game? Whatever. Fine. You can... Fine. Is it the same player now? Probably not. But once Diggs came on board, look at the yards. Look at the completion percentage, the touchdown rate, passer rating. They exploded. Stefan was the model of consistency for this offense. He snagged 100-plus catches in all four of his seasons. Steph wasn't just your run-of-the-mill number one receiver on a team. This is a superstar who does not shy away from big moments or sharing how he feels, maybe to a fault, certainly to the fault of uh, the, the court of public opinion. But Stefan was critical, crucial, and paramount in helping Josh take his game to the next level. You just saw the numbers. You can't argue that, Twitter. You can't argue that, people. Um, I think we'll see Stefan be the same thing for C.J. Stroud in Houston. I said it yesterday. My initial reaction was, well, who won the trade? C.J. Stroud did. And it presents this opportunity I'm talking about, the positivity for Allen to show those, it, that, that wasn't the case. I would ball out with whoever's there, Shakir. Curtis Samuel, Mac Hollins, bring on a rookie, bring on Lad McConkey, like we talked to him yesterday, uh, Mitchell, Thomas out of LSU, Xavier Worthy, potentially a speedster to add to that offense. Uh, 
but to put the everything on Allen's shoulders isn't fair. It's never worked. It's why you're always like, hey, James Cook, let's run the ball. Hey, Devin Singletary, maybe give him the rock a little bit. This now is a great chance. All on those shoulder pads, Josh Allen to quiet anybody who might be questioning what he is capable of. But make no mistake, Stephon Diggs was that dude, took his game to a next level. That's You heard me. Took his game to a next level. The numbers say so. So let's see what it looks like without that. And I, I believe in Josh. I believe he'll succeed. And I believe when you're absorbing a cap hit like that, things were irreparable um, at that point, And everybody had to move on. So after all of this, though, I am left wondering, um, you know, with all due respect to, respectfully, to the Bills org, uh, like, how did we get here? You know, Brandon Bean is amazing. He had a press conference yesterday. He addresses the trade um, and sort of the state of the union of the team. There weren't a lot of answers. Listen to what he had to say when he was talking about some of these concerns. Yeah, I mean, are we better today? Probably not. Yeah, we're, it's a, it's a work in progress. And, um, we're going to continue to work on that. I would just hope that people know I'm as competitive as hell, and I'm not. I ain't giving in, and we're gonna we're gonna work through this, and we're gonna continue to look. Wolf comes to mind. His demeanor. His. I don't know. I'm not going to give up on the Bills because Josh Allen is there, but it's and, and McDermott. This is something of a mess right now. They need, they need a wide receiver. You know, they need, they need a lot of things. Oh, my goodness. They've shed five pro bowlers, not to mention six of their eight captains from last year. They're eating all the dead money, taking on an additional cap it by trading away digs. This is a hard pill to swallow. This is a step back when you were so close. You needed to add. You didn't need to subtract. And, and don't blame Josh Allen's contract, okay? Brett Veach and the Chiefs, they've been able to keep a core together and get an influx of young talent since paying Patrick Mahomes even more than the Bills are playing, paying Josh Allen. That can't be the excuse. Do not come for your quarterback and his deal that he deserves. Okay, I'm interested to hear Deshaun Jackson's thoughts on all of this a little bit later in the show. I'm interested to hear Spencer Rattler's like, it's not about the receiver, it's about the quarterback. I wonder what his take is. Um, but it's hard to me, hard for me to sort of feel good. In Hamilton, I find myself being negative for the second day. I'm throwing in, I'm throwing in with the Texans over Buffalo in this in this trade and what this season uh, might look like. But that, that, you know, the press conference wasn't exactly like, I'm on my feet, okay, let me run through a wall. Yeah, and and this is kind of the the danger of going all in. Like we saw kind of the Rams do it yeah. and it paid off and they got that Super Bowl and they had to take a step back for a year and restructure. The Bills weren't able to get that ring and now we're seeing them have to take a step back after being so close, but I guess the hope is kind of looking to how fast the the Rams were able to kind of shed some salary and turn yeah. it around. That's the one hopeful thing I would look at if I'm a Bills fan, but this is this is a tough day. They'll be excited at 28. They pick a receiver. They have extra picks. They'll hopefully bolster, and there'll be there'll be something to, to wrap their head or heads around there. Um, you know, I think I think you think that I always forget everything. You know, you think I'm so forgetful. You're always like, this is don't forget this, and like don't you know you're you know I, I'm a forgetful person. But I want you to know when it comes to like revenge. I am not a forgetful <laughs> person, and I want you to sh I want to share this little ditty right here. Do we have it, control room? Tell me who this is. Oh my god. <laughs> what did you talk to my mom or something? How <laughs> backstory, Hamilton out of nowhere goes rogue, inserts a photo of me where I look like I've, I'm a crispy piece of bacon uh, in a tanning booth uh, from when I worked for the St. Louis Cardinals, doesn't ask, no approval, slaps it on the show. And I just want you to know this is Matthew Hamilton. Cutie. Pudgy. Did you wear husky back then? Thanks. Yeah, yes I did, actually. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, there we go. There's it. my fat shaming to the HR straight on their desk. Great. Um, thought you might like that. Goodbye. Talk to you later. Thanks. Have a good week on vacation next week. All right. I want to get into the charges, too. We're bringing Spencer Rattler in studio. We have Deshaun Jackson on the show. Um, but this week also marked phase one of off-season programs for teams that have new head coaches. I love this. And... All, I'm like popping the popcorn, sitting back, and just turning on Jim Harbaugh. Hamilton and I, 
watched him speak this week. We were texting about it, riveted, because everybody's worried about who's coming for the Chiefs, what's the deal in the NFC, what's go is Jordan Love that too? I, there is a bigger thing at hand. Who is the coach that is going to steal the hearts of fans and people around the league? Coaching personality matters more in 2024 than it ever did before. And maybe it was the 20 years of Belichick just saying nothing and all of that, but, but, uh, I'm looking for who is the McDaniel, the Dan Campbell. Sirianni held it for a second. And I would put all of my money that it is Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is a wild card. He's a maniac, a wild man. And we put together a little reel of some highlights from his pressers this week um, that Hamilton and I very much enjoyed. Mind you, this is all from one press conference. Take a listen. This is just true. It's been the best damn job I've ever had to start out with. And... Uh... Hope it ends that way. I mean, it's like you got life now. You know, you just just found out your wife was pregnant. Hey, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a we're gonna have a child. Great. What's good for the bee is good for the hive. What you do speaks so loudly that we can't even hear what you're saying. How many times can you take 225 and pull it into the chest, stick it, release it? How many times can you do that? The back, the back is just an untapped gold mine of lean muscle mass. Yeah, do you want a steel rod uh, in your neck or do you want to do do noodle? Fat's the enemy of speed. Uh, the guy from The Accountant, you know, in the, in the movie, uh, Ben Affleck, you know, he's got one glass, got one fork, one knife, one spoon. I mean, it's, I mean, it's locked, cocked, ready to rock. Such an awesome day. Attention to them because they got rid of Keenan Allen, they got rid of Mike Williams, uh, but this man, listen, Mike McDaniel, you want all those endorsements? You want all the, you know, like you're, you're the star now? No, he's going to take your crown. Uh, Dan Campbell, it's been a long time since we're talking about biting kneecaps. He's coming for your, it is, who is the top personality among NFL head coaches? Andy Reid, always a favorite. OG, fine. It's Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is going to take it and run with it. I don't even know what he's saying there. He's absolutely insane. Um, but we've, we've seen how much coaching and how coaches talk to their players matters more and more and more. Um, and I think he's coming for the crown here. And I will say, Say, the very interestingly enough, we looked at the schedule because we're disgusting and sick pups, and what else are we going to do in April? We looked at the schedule, and we're going to get uh, the Jim Schwartz moment again, okay? Harbaugh and Schwartz, we all remember, there was a fired-up moment between the Niners and the Lions. Uh, the Chargers play Schwartz's Browns this year in Cleveland. So forget Super Bowl rematch or Chiefs-Ravens or whatever. This is the game I'm circling on my schedule release day. It is going to be all Harbaugh all the time, and I can't wait to hear from him every um, game and every pregame and postgame and everything in between. Coaches, you're on notice. All right, we're going to talk to Spencer Rattler. Uh, he's going to be in studio after the show. Hopefully, he, we're getting him a snack, some, some water. We're taking good care of him here. It's your bright and early on Up and Adams. You guys have questions for Rattler. Hit me up. Did I call some NFL coaches and GMs this morning on my way to work to ask about him? I did. Let's do it. And that promo should never, we should not, not have done that promo, right? Yeah, I don't know why, why did, that, that, would, that would have been not the move. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I would have bring him on until, give him a minute. Okay. And I would keep his, can we keep his mic down we, too? We're doing something else in the clock or Spencer next? No, we're doing Spencer next, but I don't want him out here with the YouTube and stuff. I just okay, want gotcha. to protect him at all costs. I think, I think, we've, I think he's done enough. Yeah. Um, no, don't, or don't, don't put it up. Don't put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Hamilton, did you like that? Did you like that, you jerk? Yeah, that was great. Um, thanks for showing me as a middle schooler. I just want to know where that came from. Who, like, uh, if you were sold to me guess, out there. If you were to guess who... Who sent me that picture? By the way, proactively. It's not like I, you know, I don't have the attention span to say like, let me go and find uh, this. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Music, yeah. Come on in, Spencer. Right. But I will let you know your aunt, your people can hear you. Gotcha. Just letting you know. You're so like, so smooth with it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I got it from that fan who gives me all of the info, Hamilton. Wow. He, well, he, he found my middle school yearbook? He, I have no idea, but he's clearly That's hacked terrifying. into the Matrix because he knows <laughs> he knows where all the bodies are buried. Yes, Spencer. How are you feeling? What are you right. doing today? 
Out here with you. Do you like LA? Yeah, I love but it out here. Yeah, what do you like doing out here? Getting some food, chilling. You want to talk about shopping, your wide receiver? Seeing the beach. Oh yeah. You want to talk about him? Zay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my guy. Yeah. Hey, what, did you hear what I said about Stefan Diggs? Uh, a little bit. What do you make of that? People are just saying like, good riddance. He's got. He's a great receiver. He's a great receiver. Yeah, probably yeah. a top top five, top yeah. six receiver in the league. CJ you know? Stroud's probably pretty happy. Oh now. yeah. Shoot, I'd You're be for sure. You're loaded down there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you have um, do you have NFL friends? Like who is who would you? I wouldn't say anybody too close. Yeah. You know, people within my agency, people I've played with. Um, anybody like give you advice? You hit anybody up for questions? You know, I kind of stayed in touch throughout the years with Jalen. Obviously, yeah. hurts because I played with him for a year. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's probably How's a few others. How's he doing? Others. I haven't talked to him. In a He'll tell. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure he's doing fine. He's very quiet. <laughs> I was at the facility last year before the season started, and I was like scared to say hi because he's so focused very. and so like. Yep intensely sitting there. It was a cafeteria full of people and everyone's hanging out and he's just by himself with earphones in. I was like, oh man, was yep. he always like that? He's got that aura. Was he know? always like that? Oh yeah. Okay, yep. we'll talk about your am aura. I, am I here. sitting good here? In a minute. I think so, I don't okay. know, who knows. All right, we're gonna look over here. Okay, after winning the senior ball, I guess we're looking over here. Psych Audible! Um, this, this dude sitting across from me killed it at his pro day. My next guest, one of the fastest rising stars in this year's draft. He's a two-time captain uh, at South Carolina. Well, not anymore because he's about to be in the NFL. Spencer Rattler, how are you feeling? I'm great. Thank Spencer it's great to Rattler, be here. NFL quarterback. How does it make you feel? Sounds good. It's yeah. a blessing. Blessing just to get here. Are you like a manifesting kind of guy? Are you a visualizer? How do you sort of handle all the pressures and being torn apart. I guess you could say I manifest a lot, you know, kind of just see myself in that position ever since a little kid. And uh, it's awesome to be at this point right now, three weeks till the draft, but as you know, the work's just starting. Do you know what you're wearing? Do you know if you're going? Tell me everything I need to know. So I'm gonna stay back home with the family, you know, tight group of friends, um, probably just do it at home. Um, I'll have something nice to wear. Can I ask you why? Why, why you know, I'm thinking like if it was me, the hoopla, it's in Detroit, Detroit's gonna be crazy, mm -hmm. Roger Goodell, the whole thing, like, do you, you just wanna stay home, figure, figure it out? I think it's just easier to yeah. stay at home, you know, be around the fam, be around the fam, everybody you love, and uh, keep, keep it a little more simple. I love it. What are you most looking forward to? It being over already? This journey's pretty long. It's a long I mean, I've just been trying to take advantage of every opportunity. Um, just looking forward to hearing my name get called. Um, I want to start with the final four here. Let's mm -hmm. really get into okay. this here. South Carolina women's basketball team. Okay, everyone seems to be talking about Caitlin Clark and the resurgence of UConn. Tell people why they need to stop sleeping on your Gamecocks. I hope nobody's sleeping on them because I, I think they're still undefeated. I mean, Don Staley's the GOAT, greatest coach in women's basketball by far. Um, love Don, love the, love the women's Gamecocks. Um, I see them winning it all. So you think they're going to beat NC State? Book that. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you wish you could go to that game? I feel like you should go. <sighs> is that is the Final Four for women's out in Arizona as well? Uh, in Cleveland. In Cleveland. Okay. So yeah, I probably Can't won't make that there. one. I mean, agency got to send the jet, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they got a private jet here. Um, you have a Gamecocks tattoo. You're wearing a long sleeve, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to let you do. I think we have a picture of this thing, right? Um, a video. What does this say about <laughs> South Carolina that you, you know, did this? Let me see this thing. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I was there for two years. It's like a home for me. Um, it's my home away from home. Love it. Uh, graduated from there, so it's stamped on me for life. What does it say about South Carolina? Because you transferred there from Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. why is there, you know, why, why that, why that, not that? No, I had love for Oklahoma for sure, but just that feeling at South Carolina, that, that Southern hospitality is real, you know, teammates, fan base, everybody. It was amazing. We're going to go deep into this past of you, Spencer Rattler, here. Okay. You were great on the court as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just show some video. You won the Arizona uh -oh. State Championship at Pinnacle High School, averaging yeah. 13 points a game your junior year. Um, do you think you could have done some damage in the NBA if you stuck with it? If I was 6'5 and up, <laughs> Most deaf, but uh, yeah, I mean, I had a couple of 30, 35 point games, you know, in, in high school, we won a state championship my junior year. Um, we had a great team, so definitely miss those days. How do you feel about the talk about you in this draft? Like when you hear whether it's something um, constructive feedback or something good or bad, like we just had you back there with a color analyst who said you look 45 in one thing, 25. I'm like, if somebody said that to me, I would cry. <laughs> How do you handle some of the, the things that are being flung your way? You know, I think it just comes with the territory, especially being a quarterback going through this process. Um, it's nothing new. You know, you go through it through college. Uh, it's a whole nother level right now. But, I mean, you control what you can, and uh, everything else will take care of itself. Uh, take advantage of every opportunity. Check the boxes off. Go complete your goals, and the rest, the rest will handle itself.
here's what I want to know. Through this process, you're being thrown a lot of tough tasks. And, and you know, teams are preparing to give you a, a lot of difficult things or a lot of tough questions. What's been the toughest sort of situation from a team for you to have to, to deal with? Which, which team did you ha uh, have to prepare for the most? Um, like you said earlier, uh, it's probably Denver, you know, with, with their QB quiz and what they did for the install. Um, it was a pretty pretty cool thing, but definitely had to study study up on that, uh, but did a great job with that. What does a quiz entail? Like questions about like your favorite color or like w questions about like really detailed stuff? Just offensive stuff, just quarterback stuff, really breaking down their offense, formation, stuff like that. He's a maniac, that John Payton. A maniac. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, uh, there was an, uh, another, uh, there was a, a coach that I talked to that compared you to Matthew Stafford and his arm. And he said he can, he can spin it just like that. How do you feel about that comparison? It's a great compliment. I grew up watching Matthew Stafford, no Sean Marino at Georgia. Um, so definitely a fan of, of Stafford for sure. Love what he, love what he does, um, love what he has done. You know, watch his tape throughout my career, try to pick little parts of his game and implement it into my training. And, uh, you know, he's got a big arm, so that's a, that's a great compliment. He's a Super Bowl champion. That's right. Uh, do you model your game after somebody in the NFL? Is there a quarterback that you sort of patterned yourself after? You know, I've never really patterned my game after anybody. Kind of just watch what guys do and, and try to just do a little bit of that, you know, within training, practice, game, stuff like that. But, I mean, naturally, this is just who I am. You know, I've always been this way. I feel like Drew Brees, no? Did you grow up liking Drew Brees? I mean, he's a technician, very accurate, can put the ball wherever he wants, can process at a super high level, uh, one of the best to ever do it. Have you gotten any good advice, I feel like, going into the draft, how to handle yourself, things that you're going to get thrown? Did any, anybody, like, along, who's the person alongside that you're sort of every day keeping up with? Mm -hmm. uh, is it your agent, former coach, something like that? I would say family, definitely my agent, uh, Chris, and just really just controlling what we can, working as hard as we can every single day leading up to the draft. And then once you get there, I mean, you got to restart over. You're brand new, rookie, um, go in the building, be a leader, be who you are. Uh, you know, get to learn your teammates, staff, coaches, everything, and just find your routine that first year. So I'm looking forward to it. Why don't we shout out your team? Because that's the thing people maybe don't know that are watching. Like, you have to decide on people who you're going to trust, ride with through this process. Like, how much do they mean to you right now in this process? And some of them are here bright and early in studio. Mm -hmm. A ton. I mean, just not now, but even throughout college, everything, high school. I mean, having a family, having a team is super important. So. I uh, wouldn't be here without them, for sure. Speaking, and it's like building a team, trusting them. Let's talk a little bit about your wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. You, of course, had Zay. Yep. How important was he to you? Because I'm looking at these draft mock drafts, and I'm like, y'all are going like, y'all, like, it could be you or him at some point. How would you t handle that? Xavier's a great, great player. I mean, um, obviously didn't have the production he wanted his first four years, but worked his tail off, caught his confidence. I would say that 2022 uh, Gator Bowl game, he had two touchdowns, and that offseason he really attacked, worked. We created a great chemistry, and, you know, he, he had a historic year here at South Carolina. What makes him special? Just his, he's driven. I mean, he's driven, he's confident, um, obviously super talented, 6'3", 225, can jump like 45 inches. It's freaky, so... He's a great player. It's freaky. He's a great player. Okay, two other teams that like you, and I think a lot, most teams have interest in you. It's sort of weird at the quarterback spot, Vikings and Falcons. Okay, Kevin O'Connell and Raheem Morris, which is all, both amazing. They both have interest. They both come from um, situations that are, you know, in-depth, complicated. We had, you know, Kyle Rudolph come on and say, you know, to, to handle Kevin O'Connell's volume is really, really hard. The Shanahan vibes and the McVay vibes. Um, why are they right in circling you as a guy who could take that on? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a guy that is prepared for whatever situation I'm going into. You know, I've been in three different offenses, played in two of the biggest leagues in, in college. You know, SEC, I believe, being the top. Um, you know, an elite processor, can put the ball wherever I want on the field, and, you know, great leader as well. Um, so... I feel like those qualities as a quarterback, you know, you want that, and, and I, I feel like I have that. We had a, a, a quarterback guru guy who was in the, in the room with Aaron Rodgers, learned from Kurt Benkert, um, and he was with, in the Niners locker room. He knows all those guys. He was really high on you, and he said that your skill set, uh, and he's right about it, pretty much everything is kind of wild, that uh, he actually says that your skill set fits better in the NFL even than it did in college, which is like, phew mind-blowing, but he has a question for you. I don't know, does, do, you have, do you have an earpiece? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's, let's take a listen to Kurt's question for you. You love Spencer Rattler, which I love. Yes. He's yes. going to be on my show. What should I ask Spencer Rattler? Ooh, okay. Ask him, ask him about his college scheme and the seven-man pro and three-man routes. 
Just ask him about that. Now I have no idea. Tell, answer the man's question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seven man pro. Um, we had a lot of injuries up front this year. Um, a lot of young guys playing, new in the position. Um, so it was really unfortunate with everything we were going through. Um, so, you know, we struggled at times up front, but, you know, they fought for us every single time. So seven man pro, just trying to keep that pocket nice and clean, having extra guys in protection with a tight end and a back. Um, and then three man concepts. I mean, we were pretty successful with our three man concepts with like a post spear, uh, backside dagger, check down to the back. So being able to really go through that. Um, we had a lot of success with it. Hit Xavier on a lot of spear routes, post routes for touchdowns. So there we uh, go. Give him a little love. I love yeah. that. Good question, Kurt. Yeah, good question, Kurt. Hopefully, we suffice and we answer that for you. Um, how would you describe yourself, like your personality? I could tell you, like right now, you're very self-assured. You're smooth. You're kind. There's a humbleness to you, but it's not like oh, it's not overshadowed by. You're very sure of yourself, mm -hmm. and you you really seem very mature to me. How would you describe yourself at this point in time? Well, I appreciate the kind mm -hmm. words, but yeah, I feel like I'm a guy that's definitely um, confident. You know, I never let my confidence waver. Um, you know, believe in, in what I'm capable of. Uh, have a lot of faith. Um, driven, motivated, leader. Um, just the things you said. I really feel like like that's me. And uh, as a quarterback, those are the qualities and attributes you want to have. Yeah, that QB1 thing, Netflix, people have their thoughts. What would you have done differently? You know, I was a kid at the time. Um, that's how we competed. Uh, I'm a super competitor, so, you know, we get into it. I'm still close with those guys to this day. You know, I had a great time. I have a lot of kids and, and fans that come up to me and, and say, you know, they're big fans of me from that show. So uh, it was definitely a blessing to, to be able to, you know, get others' attention and, and be, be that motivating factor for them to play the game, inspire mm -hmm. them, the youth. Um, so... You know, there's the good and bad, but, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. How have you evolved just as a player, as a person, since just even that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just a natural growth. I mean, I was 17 years old at the time. Um, but, yeah, natural growth, going through success, going through adversity. Uh, you'll go through some things. Yeah. You became friendly with Baker Mayfield. And, of course, we just talked about Jalen Hurts from your time there at Oklahoma. Like yourself, these guys have overcome, like you have, obstacles, mm -hmm. adversity, I know for a fact GMs and coaches like, they're attracted to players mm -hmm. like that, that show that they've got some toughness, they've been over something. Um, have you gotten any uh, advice from either of them? Do you learn from example, osmosis with Jalen Hurts? How does that go? Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't around Baker when he played there, but obviously, you know, had, had a couple times mm -hmm. I was around him at Oklahoma and obviously sat behind Jalen for a whole year. So I think just watching how he prepared, how he led, how he moved um, was very important for me at a young age. And, I think just seeing how he prepared and to where he's at now, I mean, that's a testament to him. So. Be more specific. What did you really pick up from Jalen in that year? Yeah, so he kind of went through a similar situation with me. You know, transferred from a school, was, was successful at that other school, uh, you know, landed at another school and had success. So really, I just watched how, how, what he did day in and day out, how he practiced. Like, like you said, he's very, you know, motivated, very driven, um, serious. And I think at times, you, you know, everybody's different. You know, I'm not just like him, but if you can take little things you learn from these guys, you can be successful. Do you hear the player comparisons to Baker Mayfield? Um, I've heard it a few times. You, you, don't, know. you don't love them? I like Bake. Bake. Bake is a hell of a player. i um, always been a fan of him, and he's doing it. He just got paid, so I'm happy for him. Uh, yeah. He's a great player. always looked up to him. It always depends on where you go, too, right? So mm -hmm. the situation, and you can rewrite your story, and that's another quarterback that's been through um, a lot of adversity. Um, I'm, I'm good friends with Yogi Roth, who, of course, um, Elite 11 is mm -hmm. a big thing, and you were part of that with Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix, I believe, um, and won the MVP. In the Senior Bowl, you beat out Joe Milton, Michael Penix, and Michael Pratt for that MVP. I'd like to know, do you think you are being talked about where you should? You know, I kind of leave that up for everybody to break down. You know, I, I feel like I'm one of the best quarterbacks in this class. Um, you know, I truly believe that, and my work's got to speak for itself. You know, I hope somebody sees that, and, um, you know, I'm just controlling what I can. But I leave the opinions and everything up to everybody else. What do you think of Caleb Williams? He's a great player. What about his game do you like? Can create. You know, make make the throws, can run, very athletic. He's a good mm -hmm. player. Spencer, what aren't we talking about with you? Because I think we see everything that we see on tape. Mm -hmm. But is there anything that we that you're like, why don't they talk about this? <sighs> I don't know. You got anything on your mind? 
<laughs> I can't think. You're, 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 being, you're playing a little too humble. I feel like you should be like, I'm t I want to, I should go number one overall. Like, let's go. Everybody would love to go number one overall, but yeah. you know, you got to control what you can. Um, I would love to be drafted as high as I can, but at the end of the day, it's a blessing to get picked wherever. Where does that come from with you that you can block out all the noise? Like people, so there's, there's different lanes of people that are like searching their name on Twitter, looking at their stuff. How do you, I can tell you operate like right here. Mm -hmm. You have not looked away once during this interview. Where does that come from? I think just being, you know, in the media's eye, being a young guy, highly recruited since 17, 18, I think that kind of gets you ready for, for this right now. You know, going through success at one school, going through adversity, already seeing things, going through things, and then coming back on the other side successful. I think going through those, um, you know, those situations, those, those things, you, you learn a lot and yeah. uh, you see things differently and process differently. Yeah, we're gonna take a short break here. We're gonna play a little game in the break and I think Deshaun Jackson is here somewhere. Let's get to, get to him. Um, we're gonna talk a little uh, NIL action, by the way. Okay. Um, okay, we'll be back right after this, guys, with Spencer Rattler. Um, okay, listen, I understand NIL deals. I'm starting to understand they're new, but all of your deals seem to be food-based. You said what? All of your deals seem to be food-based. Food-based? Yeah. Really? You don't think so? Mm -mm. Okay, first up, DoorDash. Okay, yeah, Let's that's Let's take one. a look at this. Um, DoorDash and the protein bowl, right? Do we have that? Yep, we Let's did that Let's take a one. look. Okay. Mm -hmm. so th then you have some peanuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the Georgia Peanut Commission. Yep. This is your team doing work, okay? Yep. Uh, at Oklahoma, you had an endorsement deal with who? Uh, Raising Canes. Just like a little promo thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and finally, we have you at the Senior Bowl going hard in the paint with some Reese's. That's right, okay. Is there a food brand left that you're hoping to, to uh, resume business with once you're drafted? Mm, good question. What would, be, what would be the first on the list? A food brand or like a rest, like chain, I don't know. Chipotle. 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 Okay, they hear that. They're like, don't, okay, don't do this. Don't do this because there's a competitor Chipotle here. would be good. Um, okay, what do we want to do, guys, in the, in the rest of this break? We have, what do we have, Eric? Okay. We're going to come back with this? Or are we doing this in the break? Uh, we'll come back at the beginning. We have to, Eric. We can okay, do, good. Uh, let's do. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Spencer? What would you like to say? No, I mean. Nothing you're good? Yeah, whatever you got. Okay. Yeah. I'm just on the platform. I'm trying to think of what else I'm hearing <laughs> from people that I want to tell you. Yes, absolutely. Love that. Um, okay, sounds good. Uh, where is that? Sorry. I uh, only have cards. Sorry. Um, top of the seed. And it's, it's in there. Okay, got it. Um, somebody said Chipotle is mid. <laughs> Chipotle win. I saw a thing that NBA players eat it like five times a week. See, I kind of slow down on the Chipotle. I just think it's a good, good stamped, you know, chain to have. It's not too bad for you. It's yeah. pretty clean. Gotta get Mix it up a little bit with the bowl burrito. Get back. Are you like ready for this to be over? I feel like every draft prospect at this time is like, oh my god. Yeah, 21 days. Do you feel like do you feel like you know where you, not you know? Do you feel like it's 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 known where you're going, or is it? You really don't know till you know. You know, like I'm just kind of this is a going, weird going year. with the flow. Yeah, clearly you are. Yeah. You are going with the flow, and I appreciate you for going with the flow here today. Yeah. You've been amazing. Um, okay. Get this earpiece to stick. Uh, I'm gonna ask about the youth camp too. Okay, guys. Cool. The youth camp. Great. We'll do that. Can I ask about your parents? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Okay. yeah? I was asking you what you want to talk about. You could just tell me. You're the quarterback. I'm ask just whatever. the wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are back with South Carolina quarterback and future NFL star Spencer Rattler. I'm like, what do you want to talk about? You're the boss. You're the quarterback. I'm just like a, you know, I'm just on, on set in the practice squad over here. You're a big time player too. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how you prepare. It's so important. I know NFL coaches, that they're, they're ripping everybody apart and, and putting you under a microscope all the time. As far as you approaching the game, the draft, your life, decisions, mm -hmm. how does Spencer Rattler prepare? So each week, you know, it's the same, same routine every week throughout the season. Um, Sunday, we, we get in the building after the game. Um, we're attacking our cleanups. I'm um, watching tape before I even get with my coaches just so I have the answers before they even ask, you know, just so I'm prepared. Uh, Monday's our off day, get in the facility, take care of the body, um, go through our, 
you know, stretch routine, whatever we have. Uh, I get a 90 minute massage every Monday. It's mandatory throughout the season. So I think that kind of kept my body into the game. Tuesday, base down day, we're going through all our base down stuff. I've already met with, with Coach Dow Loggins, um, great coach. You know, he lets me have a lot of input, so it's awesome. You know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, every day, it's it's a consistent routine. Friday is probably our biggest prep day. You know, I get the guys in there, um, you know, nice and early hour before we leave, go through our whole walkthrough of our opening plays, um, go to the hotel, and then go through our whole call sheet. I mean, 70, 75, 80 plays. I'm breaking down every coverage, first, second down, third, short, medium, long, fringe area, red, coming out, situational. I mean, it's, it's in detail. So coming to Saturday, you're fully prepared. What would your teammates say about you when you're not in the room? How I, would they describe you, do you think? I think they would say I'm a, I'm a great teammate. I mean, a guy that, that loves his guys. I mean, just fun to be around, not, not too serious, you know, all the time, serious when needed. Um, you know, cool, calm, and collected. You know, I think that's what they say. Sounds like you don't have time for very much. You're, you're very routine, you're super prepared, yet somehow you have time to help others. And that's a big part of being an NFL quarterback. You're going to these cities, these communities, you're expected to carry yourself like a leader. And you have a Spencer Rattler youth camp. It's May 18th in Columbia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in South Carolina. I wanted to shout it out, but I heard that you had over 400 kids there last year. Tell me about this. It's an amaz amazing uh, camp put on by FlexWorks. Um, they do such a great job. We had, I believe, 400, 450 kids That's out there wild. last year. So, I mean, from everywhere. I mean, all of South Carolina, um, special community. Kids kids love their Gamecocks and get out there, do some fun drills, some competitive drills. I think it's ages 6 from 16, so you get to see all different types of skill sets, but really just having fun with the kids out I there. I wonder, does it do something to you to be around kids? Does it make you remember that this is why I love the game, not this business stuff that I'm doing day in, day out? Most definitely. I yeah. mean, that's that's the reason I do it. One of the biggest reasons I do it is to inspire the youth. You know, nothing's better than, you know, after a win or even a loss, a kid coming up to you saying, oh, can I please get a you know autographed picture? You, you could have just lost by 20, but you might be feeling horrible, but this kid is super excited, so... It's, it's a blessing. You, like so many, blessed with parents who are supportive of you, who um, you're talking about being inspired, but they, I'm sure, inspire you as well. Um, uh, when you look back at the kid in these photos that we're, we have here, mm -hmm. what sort of, what, what do you think as, as far as in regards to your parents and then being on this journey with you? It's been a long look journey. Look at this kid. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's been a long journey, but, um, you know, my dad, my mom, my little sister um, have done such a great job just pushing me, you know, keeping me in all sports, sacrificing a lot. You know, played multiple sports coming up with my sister, so um, it's been a long journey, and we're, we're just getting started. You what know? do you, when you look at this guy, what do you want to tell this guy? What this guy? Kid. This kid, this little boy. Shoot. Be proud of yourself, you know. You've done a lot, accomplished a lot, and uh, there's a lot a lot for you in the future. So what advice keep, would keep you going. give him? What advice would you give him, really? If you really like, we're talking about visualizing and manifesting, this little kid out there running routes, throwing the ball, catching the ball, what, would you, what advice would you give him about your future? Yeah, I would tell him, you're going to have success, you're going to hit adversity, you're going to fail, but keep pushing. Keep pushing, keep going, keep working, everything's going to turn out okay. I love it. I think we have Deshaun Jackson. Do you know, are you familiar with Deshaun Jackson? Oh yeah, came up watching him. Got to get that earpiece. And look at what a professional is. Unrattled. Yep. Rattler, to, his, his earpiece is coming out, he doesn't care. He's Deshaun, they got out. Spencer Rattler in studio. Hold on, yeah, my dear, I'm all, I'm all fatter. What's going on? What's up, man? <laughs> Deshaun, I see half of your face. Get it together. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on my phone. I can't. Y'all don't know. You gotta, you gotta work. I'm on vacation, spring break with the kids. You know, I'm Where not at you? the computer. Where are you? What I'm advice do you want to give Spencer Rattler? Oh man, what's going on, man? I've been watching a lot of YouTube, man. You doing your thing out there, man? And uh, you know, just take it one day at a time. I know you're probably overwhelmed with the process, but. At the end of the day, it's football, bro. You start off as a young kid, and now look at yourself. Like you said, you told yourself basically to be proud of yourself. So, you know, enjoy every step of the way, bro. Work hard. And at the, at the end of the day, just be consistent, bro. If any advice I could give you, consistency is number one, man. You know what I'm saying? So just put your head down, you know, back against the wall mentality, and just keep working, bro, that, and you'll be good, man. Just have, and have fun. Enjoy the process, bro, because it's overwhelming. And it's a lot, bro. Just enjoy the process. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. He's handling it really well. Deshaun, can you see video can, on your phone? Can you see Can you see us? Yeah, I'll see you. Yeah. Okay, so everybody talks about this man's big arm, right? He's got that. He's got mm -hmm. that spin. He's got the big arm. But can you talk about his trick shot accuracy? I want you to look at this, Deshaun. Have you seen this? Spencer, walk us through this. What am I looking at? <laughs> this is in high school. Uh, Malik Zaire, he played at Notre Dame. Uh, a few other colleges. He was, he was with a company called Overtime, so we went down to Tempe. <laughs> and <clears> it, <throat> it probably took 10, 11, 12 tries, and somehow that ball went in. It was like a little youth ball, but got lucky on that one. Deshaun, how, how long do you think you'd be on that mountain before you could hit that shot? 
I was gonna ask him, man. Did, did they make it seem like you made it in one in one try? <laughs> uh, I think they kind of edited it like that, but it probably took a good 12, 15 times. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably would be able to come close. I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, make it into trash can or that. That's elite right there, brother. It's elite. <laughs> Deshaun, last one before we say bye to Spencer. Where would you like to see this young man throw the rock? What team? Mm. I don't know, man. I, th I think, I think Minnesota. Going over there with Justin Jetta, man. Minnesota, I think that'd be a good fit for him. They need a quarterback, too. <laughs> Spencer, what do you think about that? Hey, that's, that's a great situation. It'd be a blessing to play there, for sure. Got a lot of weapons. Kevin O'Connell, that's a lot, that's a lot, of, a lot of plays. A lot of throwing. Definitely. That'd be good, man. Congrats, though, man. And yeah, like I said, man, just... You know, so what you say, 21 days away, three weeks, three weeks away, man. Just, I'm, I'm sure you can't wait to get in there, tra training camp, OTAs, and just, you know, have fun, man. So you, you deserve it, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. We'll be back with Deshaun Jackson yeah, saying man. goodbye. So, good luck. Thank Enjoy you. every moment. Like Deshaun is saying, just count it down. That's right. I can't even give you advice. You're like, have, you're like, figured out already. Nah. My gosh, <laughs> you are, what, 22 going on 40. You're <laughs> killing it. Um, I'm so appreciative. Thank you for it. Back on Up and Adams, one thing about Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley is that he might be the next small school receiver turned NFL star. Hear me out. Cooper Cup out of Eastern Washington, Tio out of UT Chattanooga, Jerry Rice out of Mississippi Valley State. We have seen big time receivers come out of programs that 
do not get much buzz. And I'm not gonna put them in the same class as those guys, of course, I'm no idiot here, but Corley has a chance to be next in line. And we gotta highlight that. He's 5'11", 215. This is, this is a yak monster, okay? He scored 22 touchdowns over the last two years. I feel like every versatile receiver who can run with the ball gets compared to Debo, and I am tired of it. But Corley at least does the comp some justice and says that he's modeled his game after the Niners star. He is so strong, he is so physical. Um, and as you can see here with him pushing his way into the end zone through the entire Ohio State defense. Um, I think we should, there we go. Yeah, okay. This needs to be framed. Put this in the Louvre, okay? He has shown he can compete against the very best. Corley played against three power five opponents during the last two seasons. He's averaging uh, 94 yards per game in those contests. So, by the way, I don't know if you saw Senior Bowl. If you didn't, all you need to know is he completely dominated. So right now, where is he going? He's seen as a second to third round pick. And if that's the case, I'm gonna say this might be the best value in the draft. I'll be talking about it the Friday after from Cabo. Like, this is a hell of a value um, on day two. And speaking of receivers, by the way, and there's your one thing about Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky, we are gonna talk to my favorite wide receiver. Sean Jackson, he's different than other receivers. Touchdown to Sean Jackson! DJX is back. He brought lightning fast speed to the field. You know, he's got some Pro Bowls, some league-wide records to prove it that will stand forever. But he's also uh, kind enough to hang out with us from vacation. What's on the agenda? Are you braving Disney World? Like, are we going to Epcot? What are we doing? Yeah, we so I actually took the kids to Miami, um, you know, for spring break. And then I, I have a crib in uh, Tampa. And we came down to Tampa. It's a little bummer yesterday because the whole weekend was good. We had fun in Miami, did the jet skis, boats, yacht, the whole thing. And then we came yesterday and was supposed to go to Bush Garden. And it rained on us. And I was, the kids was kind of mad. I'm like, oh, hopefully we could try to come back the next day. But really just having a good time, man. Uh, you know, Cali's home. But, you know, I, I love Florida. Something about Florida. So the kids wanted to come out here and we're just enjoying our time. I love that. Did you mention, did you say to the kids when they were upset that it was raining, did you say that yacht? Do you remember the yacht that I took you on? You took your family on a yacht? The, what? The, the yacht, we had the jet skis. They was jumping off the boat into the water. Yeah, it was fun, man. They got to see all the very expensive houses. They like, Dad, can we buy the house? Can we buy the house? I'm like, oh, slow down. <laughs> it's like $50 million crib. <laughs> I mean, you could. I know that you could. We'll see if you do. And I know Kelly's always home. We had Spencer Rattler in here. You were very adamant about, like, this is overwhelming. It's a lot. Are you are you basically saying like the draft stuff's a lot of BS? Just like, you know, what what are you really saying by saying all those things? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was it was so long ago when I yeah. uh, went through that process. Two thousand eight was, you know, um, the year I, I went through all that. But yeah, I mean, you go through the combine, you go through all these workouts. I mean, it's almost like you're like the guinea pig. You got to be like pulled and twist every position. Doctors messing with you. Coaches asking you a million questions trying to find character issues, this, that, and the third. So as a player that's worked so hard to get his position, himself into that position, it's like, all you want to do is worry about football. It's like, come on, ask me some questions about football. Let me get on this field and show right. you my talent. But, I mean, it definitely gets overwhelming. And I could just remember, like, right now, like you just said, this this point right now is like, hurry up, draft, hurry up, draft, hurry up, draft. I want to know where I'm going. I'm ready to go to training camp. I'm ready to go to OTAs. Like, so it's like, it's definitely like, you get tired of these interviews. Everybody asks you what team you want to be, yeah. uh, be picked by. It's like, we don't know. Like he says, I mean, we don't know. He just said, I'm just looking at him. I'm like, I'm feeling bad for him because you're like, what you want to talk about? He's like, well, I just want to go play football. I know. <laughs> But he was, I, I like how he carried himself. I like it. And he's got... No, nah, he, uh, he was a good kid. Good yeah. Kid. I, I'd like to see him. You said Vikings. I'd like to see Vikings, Broncos. I think that would be good. That would be interesting to see him there, yeah, too. Um, listen, there's the NFL draft. That's all anybody's talking about until yesterday. And we get this whopping freaking trade out of nowhere where the Bills say, hey, Stephon Diggs, number one bona fide... Consi you mentioned consistency. They don't get consistent uh, like they do with Stephon Diggs. They trade him down to the Texans. So the benefit to C.J. Stroud, who I'm sure will love that... Why would the Bills trade Stephon Diggs? Ah, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really see that benefiting them. I mean, they they can take the position where, you know, they'll trade him off. He he has a big contract where cap issues. We 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 need the money. We need to free up the money. I mean, I can see them taking the position that they want to go draft young. I mean, have a younger receiver come in. Um, but I mean, as far as trading that that type of 
caliber of a player, I mean, they're going to look back. I, I think they'll regret that in the long run. I mean, they might be just in a rebuild mode, and uh, they just need some young, younger players around uh, around um, Josh Allen. That's, that's all I can see. Deshaun, you can't say that you don't know what happened here. I mean, you always know what happens ev everywhere. We even have mm -hmm. Marissa found a picture of you doing a jersey swap. Jersey swaps don't just happen out of thin air. What's going on with Stefan? I mean, you know, Stefan, he, he's that caliber of guy, man. I think he's he's willing to, you know, go into the market where it's like, I want to go to a team where I can win. I feel like, and he's he's going to a team that's younger that, you know, like you, that y'all see that Stroud, Tank Dale, uh, you know, Nico Collins, a, a couple young guys. But as far as me, I, I think the Bills, they their, their numbers outnumber versus the Chiefs. And, yeah. uh, you know, as far I, I I've heard a few things about him and Josh Allen kind of butting heads and, you know, just kind of like he wasn't really as happy being there. So I think it's just a fresh start for both, uh, you know, both parties in this situation. And it's better just to kind of let a guy like that, you know, uh, get traded or test the market somewhere else. Yeah, I think I, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, and we always heard like little things here and there. But the difference is they got rid of him and they have to eat like $30 million. I know you've been on vacation. So this is what happened was... It, it's going to cost the bills thirty-one million dead money. in dead money. And dead money. Thirty-one million I mean, it's plus a, an extra three million dollar cap hit. So that's got to be something beyond a football decision. That's I'm not buying. It, so, it, so, it sounds like the Russell Wilson um, trade. You know, that, mm. The Broncos had to eat that dead money as well too. But uh, you know, in, in this game, man, I, I think the fans and you know sometimes the media. I, I'm not gonna call you the media because I feel like you got a good insight Thanks. to. You know, a lot of a lot of players, you know, you're very personal with players and you you get to really understand the players for who we are. But I think in this business, a lot of times we don't really understand what goes on behind closed doors. And in this particular situation, there has to be something where Sean McDermott, general manager, presidents, you know what I'm saying? Like that it, it's deeper. Like you said, it's not just him not being a football player or being able to, you know, get the statistics, you know, it's something deeper. And we don't, yeah. I don't really, I can't sit here and right. tell you I know, but I just know as far as quarterback, receiver, they really didn't have, I wouldn't say they went eye to eye, but it was just more of him wanting to win, I think. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't feel like he thought they was going to be able to beat the Chiefs. That's AFC East, is the, I'm mean, not the AFC East, the AFC Conference is the Chiefs. And I feel like, I think he would rather go with the young quarterback and, you know, a new team that's driving, I mean, that's thriving instead of staying with the Bills where they every year are getting beat by the Chiefs. He didn't think they could beat the Chiefs. That's a statement right there. I mean, that's... Hey, man, we've seen it year after year after year. I mean, what is it, about four, wow. four or five years? It's been tough. Brandon Bean was asked, like, did he ask for a trade? Did he force a trade? He didn't answer it. His, his, his exact quote was, I talked to his agent throughout the process. So it would make sense. And now he goes to C.J. Stroud, and they're loaded, right? They've got, it's incredible what they've got going on, whether it's Nico Collins or D'Amico or all of that. How good are you prepared to say this Texans team will be? How excited are you about what the Texans have ahead? I'm very excited, man. CJ Stroud is a is, is a young, great talent in the NFL. I think he has a great supporting cast. Um, it was crazy because me and McCoy actually argued on our first episode about, you know, how I felt in um in, in the Houston Texans. I think I I can't remember who he was comparing it to, but it was it was one of them teams. And I just I, I like CJ Stroud, man. I feel like what they're doing over there. I feel like D'Amico Ryan's. I actually played with him, and I know what type of leader he is. He's very passionate, and I think he's a player coach. Like players is gonna love to put put it on the line for him. So I, I'm, I'm they're ten they're ten to eleven plus wins, man. I I see them going far into the playoffs. You seen what they did as a, as a, you know their first year or C.J. Stroud's first year in the NFL. So this year, I see nothing nothing but you know prosper, and I see them getting a lot better. Yeah, I was going to ask you for like a bold prediction. We'll see how it how it changes. But like, does this why people are trying to say Stefan? Here's here's what annoys me. People are trying to say Stefan Diggs didn't make Josh Allen. He didn't bring his game up. He didn't. But the numbers say that Josh Allen before Stefan Diggs, before this mm -hmm. this receiver came in, the numbers weren't great. And now we have to see what are they going to look like without them. Like, if you're Josh Allen, you can't be happy about this. I just can't believe. Two quarterbacks can, or quarterback and wide receiver, as you know, like they cannot see eye to eye. But at what point yeah. does it get to a place where it's irreparable? Like, how can you not fix this with thirty million in dead cap? And now Josh Allen's got to be like, I'm never, I'm never gonna win. Yeah, remember this too. They got rid of Gabe, Gabe Davis yeah. as well too. So 
his top two receivers are off the market and you know, on new teams now. So it's going to be tough. I, I, I don't see this being a great year for the Buffalo Bills. I see this being a rebuilding process. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're very confident in their quarterback, but uh, it's going to be tough for Josh Allen. I, I see his numbers dropping down a little bit. Obviously, uh, you know, losing losing two of your top receivers and your top targets. Where is that Where is that production going to come from? So I think they dig deep into the draft. Uh, it's, a, it's a kid over in Texas that I think they might be trying to get. So hopefully he could come in and be a, a big target for them. I think Bills fans, I mean, Bills fans were trying to find some goodness in this, and I guess they'll find it at 28 in the draft, but I am I just think it's bleak, um, and I think Stephon Diggs is a big difference maker. But, I mean, Mitchell, who you're talking about out of Texas, like, he could be, he could be, you think he's yeah. getting drafted there? I think that's a good play for him. He's a taller guy, 6'5", he, he can run routes. I mean, he's he, he's the guy, I mean, at that position. I think he's a borderline. I, I, I mean, if he goes first round, I mean, that's that's definitely a great thing for him. But I think he's like a border borderline, you know, like in, in the first round, second round guy, you know. So I think that would be a great pickup for him. And, uh, you know, just as far as the type of style that, that Josh Allen is, I think that would be a great a great target or a great pickup for them. So, yeah, I definitely see that merging pretty well. He's a touchdown machine. He's, like, scored in every game he ever played in, I feel like, uh, uh, Adam A. Mitchell. Okay, let's talk um, – let's do some – we're going to play a little game with you before we go. Some quick hitters to get everything in because we just spent a lot of time talking about the Bills. Um, let's, we're going to – just real quick, what do you have more faith in or who you have more faith in? You have more faith um, – who do you have more faith in to get the weapons for their quarterback? The Chargers for Justin Herbert, who they lost Keenan Allen, they lost Mike Williams – or the Bills for Josh Allen, who are dying with cap space. Four point seven five million in cap space is all they have. Mm, good question. Good question. I'm gonna have to go with the Chargers, man. I, even though Harbaugh's, you know, kind of proven to me that he's a run first court. I mean, uh, you know, head coach. I, I still like them to get some help, um, you know, for the Chargers. Who do you have more faith in to have a successful 2024? Who's gonna have a better year, Bills or Cowboys? Wow. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Shoot. I, I, I guess I got to go with the Cowboys. I don't want to. God dang. Why you do that to me? Because <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you should have seen your face. You were like. Oh, uh, no. I don't want to. But it's going to be tough for the Bills. I'm just going to be real. I don't I don't really see too much good going for the Bills this year. They what? let go like they're, they're full. Like half their defense is gone. I mean, they let go everybody. Tough for the Bills. Like they're going to be bottom of the division. The Patriots might have a better year or like what? Miss the playoffs, Bills. Possibly, yeah. Man, miss the playoffs for sure, but possibly the, the Patriots might have a better year. Possibly. What? They got Gerard. They got Gerard. They got Gerard Mayo. Gerard Mayo. Mayo. I mean, okay, that's yeah. that's the craziest thing. They don't have a quarterback, but we're gonna go with them over the how the Bills have fallen. Um, okay, who do you have more faith in during this brewing drama, Drake or Future? Ooh, I'm going to have to go with Drake, man. It's hard to go against Drake. Even though I love Future, it was just hard to go against Drake. I love that that was so much easier for you to answer than the Bills versus the Cowboys. You are a real one. We appreciate you. New podcast yeah. coming soon. Episode did yeah, not. Yeah, we could. Okay, next week? Yeah, then, John. Yeah, next week, next week, next week. <laughs> okay. When you're done, we, we got to have you come on, too. Being on yachts on, or whatever the heck you do. Enjoy the jet skis. Enjoy Florida. We'll see you next week.